everybody. So I hope you're not here only for the comfortable chairs and wait for the lightning talks. So um, in this meantime, I will talk some, um, tell you something about uh, networks and uh, Bokeh and how you can plot networks uh, even if there's no uh, support in there for directly um, plot networks. Um, about me, I'm a junior software engineer at Blue Yonder. I do not use this at our work, it's just a side project, so at the moment it's not <laughs> used in our company, so um, yeah, that's it. So I hope most of you maybe heard the talk of Fabio yesterday, so did you hear it? So you know, most people know what Bokeh is, it's a great uh, visualiz uh, visualizing library. and. Yeah, I will show you basics, how you can handle the data, how you can manipulate it, that you can go back and change something or get effects. So, why did I do this? So, during my master thesis, I was working with networks, uh, some kind of social networks. Um, we wanted to explore them, and the problem was we wanted to see them. We wanted more than just tables or some columns and to read up, um, about them. So, we wanted to visualize them and we wanted to see some properties. So we wanted to see it in the browser, so maybe we wanted to uh, include it in, into an app. And I came up with this. I generated the networks and the properties and I stored them in a database. Okay, I wanted to visualize it with D3. D3, it's a nice swish, swish, um, swish knife, or how it's called, but it's extremely complicated, but it's powerful. Um, so I had to provide the data from the database and I created it in Rust. RESTful Flask app. So it's a lot of overhead and a lot of uh, programming just to do some visualization to explore. So the question was, can we do this better? And of course we did, or we can. So a friend of mine reminded me, so there's this tool, Bokeh. You can look at it and I was thinking, okay, I will try the same now with the library and it's much easier. So Python, I did not have to handle any JavaScript code at the moment. I do not have to, to care about how do I get the data to the client running in my browser. Bokeh is doing this for me. And I also can explore, uh, start my, my visualization, app, visualization app in a notebook, in a Jupyter notebook, and this is really great. And on top of this, I can change a, a network. I can change my graph, I can manipulate it, and I can uh, effects back. So if I select something, I can get this back. So I will now show you how it's done. So I will create a network, I will show it to you, and all the code you need for it is part of this uh, slide, so I did not let any um, code out. At the end, there's a more complex example, there may be, but here you see all what is necessary. So uh, I need some example data. So I was thinking about using some, usually uh, this uh, example data like Les Miserables, or something like this, but yesterday uh, I had the idea, so we are the Europeans and the people like to use Twitter. There's some nice Twitter uh, modules like Tweepy, so I used it, the information from uh, the user Europeans, and now the user Europeans, sometimes he is linked to another people, or an author uses Europeans and links to another people, so I can create, use this data and create uh, some kind of social network. So authors are connected to each other, maybe they tweet it more, so they the weight on an edge might be higher, so this will be useful for a network. So I have my data now. What is the next step? Yes, we need a network. So as I said, sadly at the moment, Bokeh doesn't support it out of house, but we can do it our own. So we use NetworkX and we load our Europe, uh, Euro, Europe Python data. I could have done it live here, but I was a little bit afraid of uh, the uh, Twitter um, limits so <laughs> and the Wi-Fi, so I did not do it. So I stored it in a GML file. So I created the network using NetworkX, and that has an, uh, also a function to write it to a GML file. So I now import this file back, and I get my network. What I do now, um, NetworkX can draw, but it usually draws with Matplotlib, and it's static. So I can use the layout from NetworkX to create a layout. And I can use this layout to fill in uh, in Bokeh, and there I can create and get an interactive visualization. So I put in my network, I put some values in for k. k just says how, how much uh, would you, um, how much distance would you have between some nodes, and it's an iterative um, algorithm, so I can say some uh, number of uh, iterations. If you're a little bit more interested, what it exactly does, you can go on the first Wikipedia page, force-directed graph drawing. 
Um, so what it basically does, it creates spring forces between nodes, and then you have a 3D model and it pushes it on a table, and then it tries in a few iterations to get rid of the um, friction, and then you have your nodes on some positions. So this is basically a spring layout or a force-directed graph drawing. I will use this layout now, or later. Um, now we have to do some um, workaround, not workaround, we have to get the data in a format we can use in Bokeh. And the cornerstone in Bokeh is usually, I would say, it's the column data um, source. It's one kind of, I think, three or four um, data sources, but I think it's the most important. It's the one you probably would, uh, would, would see first. So it's a, a class where you can store data column based. So you see on the left, there's an ID, of course, because there are usually all lists here. And I stored there the X coordination, the Y coordination, and the node name. So the first row says, uh, Bjorni, it's my Twitter handle, is located at the position 21.3. And the nice thing about this column data source is you can change it. You can add data, you can add uh, columns, and you can um, change it. And you will also get effects back. So if someone selected a node in your graph, this is the point where you get uh, information about which uh, node is selected. Um, so you can use a lot of uh, lists, uh, you can tuples, you can um, use pandas data frames to create those lists. But at NetworkX, you usually have a directory, um, a dictionary first, and so we have to do a little bit of transforming the data, and this is um, a drawback at the moment, so you have to copy the data. So. I get the layout, I have the items, so the key in IM of the layout is usually the node name, and after the node name, the value is a tuple of the coordinate of the node. So we have to extract those values and they, we have to put them in lists so that we can create our column data source. So we just extract them, they use it, they use them in the dictionary and put it back in the column data source. So now we have our node source. Now we can finally plot something. How is this done? Um, Here's a little bit of code. Um, you can ignore first the hover code, but just look at the figure plot. Figure just creates your uh, drawing, um, drawing area. So you define how, how, how big it is, and you say something else. You say which tools you want. So tab means you can click on nodes. Hoover is now the Hoover tool from above. So that you move your mouse above a node, it will show the name, because I know that I have the column name in my data source. And also I have the ID or the index. This is a, um, it's a property which is always, always there. And then you hover over it and you will see the ID and the name of a, people, of, a, of a node. The next step is I want to see my circles and this is done by plot circle. It will generate or it will um, create a, a renderer. It's the R cycles, it's a cycle renderer. And now I put my data source in here. So you say source is my node source. And now I, I want to have uh, X and Y, so here's X and Y, so I say um, the first is the uh, column name X and the column name Y, and they will be used for the positioning of the circles. And I have some fixed values for color blue and for the level, um, and the level overlay just means it's above the lines later. And it's 10 size. So we have now this. It's not really a network, it's just points. Okay, so, um, we need some more work. It's not so much, but we have to add some edges. And to add the edges, we have to prepare the edges again. So we just take the layout and the network, and we extract the, the positionings of the uh, nodes again, because we want to connect nodes. And what we do here is I get the data off of, of the edges. So if I say network edges and data is true, I will get the edges and the, the uh, weight, which is the data attribute for every edge. And now I calculate some maximum weight because I want to do some uh, alpha coloring of the lines and so I can calculate a value between 0 0.1 and 0 0.6. And I put all this in lists of a dictionary and those lists I can put back into a column data source for the edges and now I get a line source. Yes, now I can plot uh, multi-lines. And I do the same with circles. I put in the source and say the source is the line sources. And I say for the first point of every line, so now you have tuples in those first two lists. So line is defined by x, y for starting point, x, y for the end point. So 
XS is usually the starting point, YS is the end point, and this is just a name for the columns. And here you see already that we use for alpha the, the name, it's alpha, so the alpha will be used from the column data source. And okay, you cannot see it directly here, but usually the lines have different uh, coloring of alphas. We'll maybe see it later a little bit better. Okay, this was just a boring network. We want to see a little bit more. We want to see some properties like, uh, I said, centrality or maybe clustering. So we add those uh, informations to our Kalim data source and it's not so complicated. So NetworkX provides some really cool algorithms. So you can use, for example, uh, multiple centrality algorithms. I have chosen here the between us centrality. It just means uh, a node um, where, so you have shortest paths in your network and a node where a lot of shortest paths have to cross through has a high between the centrality. And now I have a centrality. Again, it's a dictionary, we have to transform it a little bit, then I can use it and put in the values as a shifted, uh, 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 a mapping to a range. So I want to use this value for the size of the circles. So I say, okay, the uh, least important are, have the size seven, and the most important have maybe 17. This just, it's just a, ma a range mapping. And I say, okay, the new column for my column data says is centrality. And I add it to my node source. So my node source has now for every node has a centrality value. Okay. I'll try this, okay. So the next point is uh, I wanted to have some clustering. So which nodes and people are maybe a little bit connected because they have been treated about um, each other. So I use this Python Lewain uh, module. It's um, an addition to NetworkX and it creates uh, clustering for you. So it's clustering is NP hard, so you will not get always the same result and it's maybe quite a calculation, needs some time to calculate it. But for this size, it's still great, so even much bigger sizes will work. So I would get a partition, and now again, I split up the partition, get out the nodes communities here. In the first, you have again nodes, I don't need them. We have the communities, and now I can again add some attribute or add a new column to our column data source, it's community, and now I have communities in my data source. Now I map, I just do a coloring mapping because I want to have different colors. I have a list of, a list of colors and I use the modulo, uh, modulo, modulo operator to just give every group a color. And now I can see another plot. No, I missed something. So you have just the added new column, but you're not using it. The problem is the renderer, I said, we have a R-Cycles renderer, has still a fixed size and a fixed fill color. So I just change them in my uh, column data um, source and I say now use centrality and now use community color for the fill color. And now can plot it and now you can see different colors, different sizes and there's a big dot in the middle. It's not, it's zero Python. <laughs> so yes, uh, I let it in there because I want to show you now, I want to interactively remove it because I don't want to have a social network about people plotting, um, twittering about zero Python if there's your Python in it. So it's not, does not make, make much sense. So we have to change it and we want to do it interactively. So I want to see, I want to uh, click on a node here. Uh, this is a little buggy because it's a slideshow and usually it works also in notebooks. Um, you can go above, uh, I can show it here. You can go here, click on something and you mark it and then you can, can you remove, I want to remove it because I say, okay, it's a bad data set. I want to remove it and I want to do some recalculation. So what I can do, I can do interactions and I can get out of column data source which nodes I selected. It's a bit of a tricky data structure in here. So you have one, 0D, 1D and 2D. Um, 0D is just uh, for um, lines and patch glues. All other glues like circles are in the 1D um, key and in 2D are maybe some multi-line drawings like uh, octets or something like this. So we just go there, use the uh, 1D key, and we have the indices of all marked nodes currently in our plot. And what we can do now, we can remove it. Um, this is just an example code, you can do it better, I think. Um, so I get the index, and I use the index to get the node from my network. And now I can 
remove the network, uh, can remove the node from my network, I will pop it out of my layout, but I have to recalculate or I restructure my data in my Calamp data source because currently they are not sharing uh, um, the data. Um, so I iterate over all of the rows, uh, all about, uh, over all columns, and I remove the index. So you could also remove multiple of them. And again, then you update the data, add just the new data for, the, for every uh, column, and you add the dictionary for the updated edges, and then you can remove an edge, uh, can remove a node. But there's a problem. Bokeh is great, but it still has uh, some problems. Not everything is working in a notebook. And as you see, I'm still in a notebook. It's just a slideshow, but it's a notebook. You cannot um, redraw data sources, or I cannot redraw automatically if you change a um, column data source. You can push your um, changes there, or you can create a push and it will redraw it, or if you run it in a bookie server, it will automatically redraw it, because usually it will um, iter um, loop over it and will check for changes, or you mark it as trick um, changed. And another problem is you cannot get those values. So what I showed you here is not working currently in a notebook. The list will, al be, will always be empty. So you have to do this in Bokeh's server. Okay, it's, it's still great. I can use a Bokeh's server to run my app, and it's not much a problem. So you can, another flawback, I have to say, yes, you, if you want to add widgets, so your notebook can add widgets like sliders, buttons, stuff like this. They will run with JavaScript code, but you can translate it, or you run it in a notebook. They will still stay with pure Python function and pure Python callback functions. Good, now I want to show you that you can do those interactions. So, as I said, this is the Euro Python uh, um, account of Twitter and I want to remove it. So I marked it, I can remove it, and you see now it's gone and we have there some other connections. You see some stronger lines, those are connections between others. You have, might be Twittered more about each other than others. And I can switch back. So, you see a problem? It's still, there's no, no uh, central person in there because we removed the very central person, Oreo Python. I still have to update properties. I push the button, I um, call an update function, I go back to my network, it does some calculations, I will get the information, put it back in my column data source, and I see now more interesting people who might be uh, interesting to you because they are. Um, Twittering a lot here, I think it's the OpenStack account. They have connection to other people's and yes, but we still have the old layout. So we can update the layout, takes a while, and now we get this layout. Looks a little bit weird at the moment because for the network for the Euro Python is a little bit, uh, I would say we have a lot of people who just Twittered about each other and then you get so one-to-one -one connections. And you also have still, like here, nodes, they don't have any connection because we removed or your Python, but we did not remove nodes who have uh, no other node attached. We can fix this, so we can remove it now. So you see, this, is one, this is one is gone, and I can reset the zoom back, and I'm back here, and I can update the layout again, and now I can explore. So we can dig a little bit deeper in there. So I am looking up ah, here. Here's my colleague, he's sitting there, and I think, yeah, he tweeted the most of our, our, our um, people, our, of our, uh, our colleagues. And I can zoom in, in here and can see where, where he's, uh, which people he's uh, tweeting about. So here's another colleague. And cool. But I can now explore also what happens if he gets a meltdown and decides to go to, to Java or something like this. I can remove it again. And then I can again update properties and stuff like this. So you see. I did mostly uh, interactive network plotting in just a few minutes, and I think it's uh, quite handy if you just want to explore. You can go further and do some more stuff. And of course, you can just switch network X. It's a great library, but you can switch it for other situations. If maybe you want to use uh, NumPy or stuff like this, you want to do some uh, heat development and you want to plot it, just think about it. You can do it. You can, uh, it's not so, not so, uh, complicated to bring it to uh, Bokeh and interactively change maybe what you're doing and bring in some values you wanted to change. And I think that's it. I hope you have enjoyed it and you maybe learned something. If you want to get the documents and the 
notebook, the Twitter data, and how I get uh, get the data, um, you can go to our company, Blue Yonder Documents. There are the presentations for this year and the last year. Here's the links for the NetworkX and Bokeh. Um, that's it. Is it working with all the layouts which are possible in NetworkX with the bouquet or not? Like, uh, can you customize the layouts more? Like, there's like five or ten different network layouts, or even they like have. So NetworkX has some layouts. They have a random circle layout, but they are not so sophisticated. Yeah. If but you if want I have like a specialized one, like my own stuff, can I use it through this as well? So it will work. Or you have you tried it? No, I did not try, but um, if you can generate a network where you just generate positions, it should not be a problem. So okay. if you want to, for example, if you want to have a spring layout where you can uh, move clusters nearer together, I think you can just, you have to copy it, you have to fork it maybe, NetworkX, and then you can bring in some additional uh, forces to draw others each better, uh, more together. It uh, should not be such a problem. So it's like in PyPlot, right? So you first draw the nodes, then the edges, and then I can put it into this one yeah. as well. OK, thanks. I uh, just wanted to understand a bit better the connection between Bokeh and NetworkX. So once you've done the initial graph with Bokeh, when you <coughs> do some more things uh, live, does it go back to NetworkX again? Or not? Pardon? When you do things at this point. Yeah, I go back to NetworkX. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. if I go, I want to see a different centrality here. Closeness centrality, it goes back to NetworkX and calculates it. It's not pre-calculated, it's just Python callback functions. They go back to NetworkX call algorithms, remove on NetworkX a node, and then you have to transform it back and then you can use it. Okay, thanks. The, so thanks for the talk, by the way. The buttons I see here, is this from Booker or have you added these yourself? Okay, this is uh, something um, you have, um, it's not in the slide, so it's basically buttons from Bokeh. Two lines, you say, I want to have a button, I want to have, uh, and then you add an uh, update function to a button, you bring it in a layout, and okay, it's three lines, no, two, two lines and maybe another. And then you have the both buttons and they do something, what you want. Any more questions? No? Give a big applause for uh, Bro.